Let me try and get your head in the right space for this, okay? What stuff have we already done under this topic of inequalities? Because you did this before the exam and you got some questions in it. What kinds of questions did you have under inequalities? Absolute value inequality. Yeah, okay, absolute value. So maybe something like this. Something like that. You have to solve that, okay? Um, did you do regions? Did you do regions? Oh. Oh, stuff. Stuff like that. Yeah, now, to be fair, this was all. I, I wonder if you remember me telling you this before the exam. All of this stuff you have covered, like in 9 and 10 sort of time. Uh, and that's really just a warm up for this, which is the real topic. Uh, interestingly enough, this, the real topic, is itself a warm up for induction next year. Uh, mathematical uh, induction. Well, really not cool. to be confused with induction cooking. <laughs> but um, that's what we're doing. Okay? So, not going to take too long. But the idea is simply how to deal with inequalities and prove things to do with inequalities. Yeah? Wait, aren't some of these the ones with the um, no. So, um, I'll, I'll deal with it right off the bat. Um, there are specific kinds of inequality proofs called, affectionately, the AMGM proofs. They stand for arithmetic mean and geometric mean. Okay? Now, I'm just going to tell you what they are. I'm going to tell you they're a four unit topic. Eventually, we will meet them and I'll explain them. Okay? But you don't have to deal with these kinds of proofs under this topic. Okay? So, to answer your question, no, you won't need any serious okay. stuff. Sure. Not in okay, so um, just to warm you up a little bit, let's start by thinking what kinds of things um, can we apply the logic of inequalities to that you guys already know. So we'll start with something really, really easy. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I'm getting these from a I'm getting these from a sheet that I will give you shortly, but I don't want to give you all of the sheet just yet, which is why I haven't handed it to you and let you read along with me. Okay? So to start with, suppose I tell you this. Um, sorry, I should have started off by where's my other thing? I'm gonna give you four numbers. And let's um let's say all of the numbers are real. Okay, now you will have to brush up a little bit on your set notation because I know how much you love it, right? Um, so your set notation, if I want four numbers and I want them all to be real, I'm going to write it like this. A, B, C, D. Um, they are all elements of, that's what the funny E means, um, of the real number set. Okay, so the R with the double line. Okay. Right, now, given that, and also given these relationships, so I'm going to give you, let's see, one, two, three relationships. Okay. Now, the important thing about having them as real numbers is real numbers can be ordered, okay? Um, because there's only one quantity, so you can, in a real way, you can say one's bigger than another. As opposed to, say, complex numbers, um, which you've in been introduced to before, even if you don't work with them, right? It's like, if I gave you these two numbers, which are complex, and asked you, well, which one is bigger? You can't really say one is bigger than another. Okay? They exist in two dimensions. There's a real part, real dimension, and an imaginary part. It's like, well, which one counts for more? Well, neither of them can be really compared to each other. Okay? So it's like saying, you know, in a field um, of, of two dimensions, okay, say, which position is the biggest position? It's like, well, there is no biggest position. Okay? Real numbers, on the other hand, they exist on a number line, okay? not on a number plane. Okay? So therefore, we ought to be able to put these in some kind of order. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a minute to um, give this a go on your own. How would you go about working out what their order is? If you work out the answer, don't spoil it for everyone. But I'll, I'll show you not just what the order is, but how it actually set out how I get this um, answer. Okay. So why don't you have a think, give it a go, and we'll come back together in like, I don't know, 30, 60 seconds, something like that. Okay. Let's go ascending, so smallest to largest. Okay. What's probably the easiest way to go about this? Yeah. You make the signs in the same direction. Okay, so One these direction. these inequality. The signs must be in. I was going. I'm trying desperately to avoid saying it. Okay. Because inequalities, as opposed to equalities, right? They do actually have a direction. You know, this way or that way. So it makes sense to get them all in the same direction. Okay. So let's let's get them. 
um, from smallest to biggest, because that's the order I want them in, right? So I'm going to flip these around. This one's already in the right direction, okay? And I'll flip these around. Okay, and now that I've got them all facing the same way, now I can see some of the relationships, yeah? So for instance, A is smaller than D, and B is smaller than A, right? So if I take these two together, clearly, B is the smallest out of all three of these numbers, right? B is smaller than A, which is smaller than D. Come in. Okay, so I can write that in, right? I can say, what did I just establish? B has to be smaller than A, and A is going to be uh, smaller than D, subsequently, right? And then this first inequality I've got means that C will be the largest of all of them, right? So now you can see I've got them all in order. So therefore, I could say from smallest to largest, I've already, um, I've already written them all out in the right order. Okay, no problems, right? Now let's move over to this, okay? More and more you're going to see um, the whole topic of inequalities is kind of like perms and columns in that it just requires thought. It's not just, oh, you go through a formula and ta-da, after my three steps I get an answer, okay? You have to engage with it and think about it and use some logic, okay? So here we go, x, y, and z, all real numbers. I know that x is bigger than y and they're both positive. And I know that z is positive. So I also could have said that um, they're all part of the positive real numbers. Okay. All right. Now, therefore, I'm trying to fill in some gaps. Okay. I'm trying to work out what's the relationship. Yeah. So if I know x is bigger than y, then what's going to happen about between x plus z and y plus z? Which way is the inequality going to go, or is there an equation? Hmm. Z is positive. So it's going to be, it's going to be headed in the same direction, right? If you like, I can think of this as taking my inequality here and adding z to both sides, okay? So the direction of the inequality is the same, yeah. Because these are questions underneath question two. Because I'm skipping B. I just told you, it's on a sheet, and I'm skipping parts of it. Pay attention! Sorry, we could not B leave that. Oh, wow, wow, how long have you been sitting on that one for? I've been waiting months to pull that one. I know. I didn't get it to you. You're not missing out. Okay, x squared and y squared. If I square both of them, I square both of them. Starting from this inequality, what would you expect to happen? <laughs> the direction of the inequality is going to remain the same, right? Okay, but when you divide by each, now again, your logic kicks in, right? If I'm taking a number and I'm dividing it by a bigger number, and this is a smaller number, right? Small, sorry, small denominator, big denominator, so which one's bigger? One or Y is bigger, right? So that's changed the direction of my inequality. So this is still pretty, you know, pretty straightforward, but you're starting to think about it, okay? All right, let me give you some which are a little more rigorous. Hmm, are you ready for this one? Yeah, I reckon I can, I, I can chuck into this. Um, real numbers, mm. and they're all positive. No, wait. No, I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to leave it. Actually, no, they're not all positive. Now, I'm going to give you, uh, much like here, I'm going to give you three relationships, and I want you to, again, put them in order. Okay? But this one's going to be a lot trickier. So, here are the relationships. So A is going to be, okay? We'll get into multiplication soon, okay? I've got this relationship. And I've got this relationship. Now, right away, it's not even an well, yeah, that's right. Um, how does this guy interact with any of the others? Now, I'm gonna let you have a think about it first. Okay, this one is harder. Okay, but I'll give you a clue. You you look at this one, you're like, huh, oh, that's weird. All these inequalities. I get how I can put inequalities together and how they relate. How do I get an equality to mix with inequalities? My tip is. You already have been mixing equalities with inequalities. The question is how. Okay. So I'll give you a minute to come up with that and um, see what you come up with. Now, here's the problem most people have. They don't know how to get the equation 
into it. They understand what it means, but they can't factor it into the rest of it. So here's the crucial thing you need to get. You've been working with equations and inequalities together already. We did it right here. Did you notice that? How did I get from this inequality? Let's just forget about this part for a minute. How did I get from that one to this one? Or everyone says, oh, duh, you add z to both sides. But there's another way of thinking about it, right? I could instead say, well, z, that's equal to z, right? And so what I do is I add this inequality, right? I add it to this uh, one, right? Because I can. I'm adding the same thing to both sides. So if these two things are equal, I can add both to the same thing to both sides, right? So if I call this one, call this two. It might be easier if you put the C's and D's on this side and the A's and B's on this side. Okay, now watch. Let's, um, let's add them first. What happens when you add them, okay? Uh, the D's will cancel, yes? So I'm going to get 2C. The direction of the inequality stays the same because I'm just adding the same thing to both sides, right? I said the D's cancel. Same thing happens here. The A's cancel and I get 2B's, right? So, so far, C is less than B. Good. How am I going to do something with the other pair of letters, the A and the D? Well, instead of adding, I'll subtract, right? Okay, what's going to happen here? You're going to get uh, the C's will cancel this time. I'm going to get minus 2D less than minus 2A. Yes? Now, that's a bit, that's not so helpful to me. I just want the letters. So, go through by minus 2, which changes the direction of the inequality, right? And I want it from smallest to biggest, right? So, I'll put that in the right order. And I already know this. That means B is less than A, right? Okay, so now I've got my order. C is less than B, which is less than A, which is less than D. So the order is C, B, A, D. 